Hello everyone, it's Matt here and welcome to a bit of a special video. AMD has been in the news a lot recently for not only their live streams about the third series Ryzen CPUs but also their new line of Navi graphics cards which are the 5700 and the 5700 XT. And by the title you may have guessed that yes, I've got one. Uh, this is the 5700 XT, as you can probably read from the box there. Um, the packaging is very unusual. Um, it's got this nice hex pattern. Um, this is a Sapphire branded box rather than uh, any other one because the Sapphire one was cheaper, even though it's the same card. Um, and got the same design, a different uh, design at the back with the uh, faint grey hexagons, and you've got some details about what its features are. Um, the PCL Express features, a bit legal, um, and that's pretty much it. And you got the bit of there, uh, given the card and the serial number, blah 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 blah. Um, but overall, yeah, you know, box art's very nice uh, from Sapphire. Um, and this box at the moment actually contains my fi uh, Vega 56, purely because it was somewhere to store it. So, um, that aside, um, personally, uh, you know, this is going to be a bit of a review and a bit of a discussion about what's going to happen with AMD and what I'm going to um, look towards in terms of upgrading. Um, first off, um, some of the reviews have commented about noise and temperatures. Personally, I've not witnessed anything that sort of says it's any worse, but possibly not also any better than my previous Vega 56. I've personally noticed no difference in terms of noise or temperatures. Um, it's definitely not any noisier. Um, even when running the benchmarks, um, I did some more benchmarking on 3D Mark um, very recently, uh, just before I upgraded. Um, and those results, pretty, uh, even when it was running, it was pretty much just uh, well, it's no noisier than the Vega 56 when I was running uh, those benchmarks. So I'm getting a performance increase uh, for no extra noise or that sort of stuff. Um, I mean, personally, I noticed the card. Um, it is the noisiest part of my computer, I will point out. Um, but then I also have a Noctua uh, double radiator, double fan setup for the CPU cooler. So, you know, noise effectively, the, you know, the graphics card is going to be the noisiest part anyway. Um, in terms of price as well, um, this is actually £10, was £10 cheaper than my Vega 56. Um, so, you know, quid's in for that. Um, and, you know, I've still got my Vega 56. I can either sell off or trade in for something else, you know. So, you know, there's money, you know, there's money to be uh, had from the second hand, uh, in the second hand market for that. Um, uh, so, the benchmark results, um, I've been using 3D Mark, the uh, updated Steam version, oh, I should point out. Um, I'm just going to change it to the scene here. And,. We have the results uh, right here. Uh, we're noticing a 30 to 38 percent uh, increase in performance compared to a Vega 56. Uh, this is against no hardware changes on the computer. Um, so this is in a Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard with a, a Ryzen Series 1 1800X CPU um, with RAM at 3133. So nothing hardware wise or configuration wise has changed on this computer and the with the exception of the graphics card obviously um so the performance increase is reasonably good um it has to be said um prob and obviously this is a vega 56 so you won't notice as much as the difference with a vega 64 or the uh, ryzen 7 cpu that uh, not cpu gpu that came out last year as like the stop gap um you can sort of see we're seeing quite a good uh increase here um and honestly it's uh at a less of the retail price as well than the Vega 56 or at least the price i paid um i also see here the highest temperature is 79 degrees c uh during the benchmarking so i've not noticed any it being any higher on the Vega 56 so i'd personally say that's a good result um obviously you are free to make up your mind but obviously these benchmarks are much heavier and much in depth um, than general usage and I will also be throwing in some b-roll uh, probably about here um, comparing the 
external looks of the uh, Vega 56 and the uh, 5700 XT. Um, so one could make a comment about, you know, why did you choose the 5700 XT over the 5700? And to be honest with you, from my perspective, it was just a case of, well, I've paid X amount for the Vega 56. I might as well pay roughly the same amount for a 5700 XT and just get that little bit extra performance. Um, and speaking of performance, um, to segue in, um, I've obviously only had the card in less than a day uh, into my into my computer, so I haven't been able to do much in the way of benchmarking or actual real life testing. Um, the one game I do like to play, Cuisine Royale, uh, isn't working uh, at the moment because Easy Anti Cheat is designed to be a pain in the ass. Um, Team Fortress Two isn't working as well. Uh, which I think might just be the fact that the uh, drivers uh, for the uh, GPU need updating because obviously this is only the first public release um, and there obviously needs to be a few tweaks uh, to the drivers made to get some of the bits working on the card um, personally. Uh, I had a similar situation with the uh, Vega 56, you know, it was very patch performance at the start and a couple of months down the line it sort of smoothed itself out um, with a couple of... Uh, well, a combination really of BIOS, a couple of BIOS patches uh, and graphics cards uh, driver updates as well. Um, so obviously, you know, there is, performance wise, it's definitely a lot better. Um, I did play some PUBG uh, last night with one of my friends and that seemed to go okay. There was a few sort of bits of lag occasionally in rendering, um, not in terms of actual interaction, just in terms of uh, rendering because it had render a certain distance and then it stutter a bit almost and then it just continue playing so um you know that could be an issue if you're you know extremely competitive and doing this you know for points or money um but obviously then you wouldn't be using such new hardware in that you could obviously so um uh, i think it's just uh waiting for updated drivers um now moving on a bit from the 5700 xt uh, to the Ryzen 3 CPUs. I personally am not going to be getting a Ryzen 3 CPU just yet. Um, there are a couple of reasons for this. The first one is that I'm waiting for proper reviews to come out and real life, um, you know, uh, waiting for uh, you know any impedance hits with the uh, with uh, some Microsoft Windows updates and that sort of stuff. Um, and to be honest with you, uh, my Ryzen 1800X is performing, you know, remarkably well. You know, it, yes, it's not as powerful. You know, it wasn't Zen Plus, it's not Zen 2, um, but it's still doing a really adequate job uh, for what I need it for. And to be honest with you, I might as well save some money and maybe upgrade uh, more towards Christmas time or maybe even next year, um, depending on what's available. Um, the other thing for not upgrading at the moment is that AMD are developing their own 599 chipset, I believe it is, um, which is uh, a high-end sort of like gaming uh, component. Um, and obviously I'm waiting to see what comes out from that because those sort of ports aren't out yet. Um, and it, it is very interesting to see um, what comes out um, in that aspect. There are a couple of real other issues as well with the x570 motherboards a lot of them have a fan on board for some of the vrms and some of the chipsets um and it's a really tiny fan it's probably about like that big maybe a bit bigger um but it's a really tiny fan and i personally have known a few issues with those where they will just randomly stop working um and it was pointed out in linus tech tips video you know as well uh, about the fan and to be honest with you I kind of agree with the comments that Linus made in that if the you know fan breaks or gives up or whatever or stops working um, unless you have something to alert you to that um, you could be frying your board um, so you know the, you could be causing quite a lot of damage not only to your board but also your CPU and other components by not having that fan running so bit of a concern from that aspect um we might see water cooled motherboards at a later date personally i don't really want to go down the water cooling route but if it's the thing that actually works and gives me the performance i need and the reliability as well um 
and you know i'm be, i'd possibly be more inclined to go down that route um well the alternative really is just to get a regular board and ensure that you you know do proper computer maintenance i've not cleaned my computer properly as i said really since i built it you know i did do some cleaning uh last year at some point um i'm not one of those people who's really picky about their computer the top get tops and sides and ends and what have you get a clean um every quarter every third of a year something like that but the actual inside wasn't hasn't been cleaned properly for about a year i'd have said um and the dust wasn't too bad so uh, you know you know airflow wasn't too bad you know it's reasonably quiet even in general use now so um so really that's it you know i've got the 5700 xt installed uh, everything is going okay and i'm keeping an eye out on the uh, third gen ryzen so um that's really it for this update uh, if you've got any questions about uh, the card um post them below um otherwise that's it from me and i'll see you in the next video